Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump laying out in blunt terms, as he always does, how he would handle ISIS. There is also controversy surrounding one interview that he gave where he said he wouldn't rule out making all Muslim Americans register in some sort of database and carry a special ID, shades of Nazi policy for the Jews in 1930. But despite that, polls taken since the terror attacks in Paris show that Donald Trump is gaining in his support in this country. Joined now by Juan Williams, Fox News political analyst, and Mary Catherine Ham, editor at large of hotair.com and a Fox News contributor. Welcome to both of you. Um, you know, every uh, situation that seems to arise so far in the political cycle for this presidential election seems to work to Donald Trump's favor, Juan. It does, and this one is a big one. Uh, and I'm, a, I'm sort of stunned at the way that it has boasted him in the polls, Martha, because we see him up in New Hampshire, we see him up in Florida, uh, and nationally uh, continuing to sustain a lead over Ben Carson. Uh, so what we have here is a moment where people are looking for a strong leader. I don't think Trump is laying out any real specifics about how to go after ISIS other than his bomb the you know, bejesus yeah. out of them comment. But I think people are taken by what I saw someone describe earlier as the force of his personality. They just want to be assured that there's someone there who's really going after the enemy. Yeah. You know, I'm struck by the contrast, because in, in politics we always talk about contrast, you know, and if you're, if you're a candidate, you want to sort of have that sharp contrast working in your favor. Boy, Mary Catherine, does he have the sharp contrast going for him, especially when you look at the president's comments at that press conference in Turkey, which I think right. will hang around this president for a very long time in terms of the tone that he set about how we were going to respond to this attack. Well, a couple things. First, Trump was pro-Syrian refugee a month and a half ago, and pretty vociferously so. Uh, so he sometimes contrasts with himself. Uh, two, this, this idea of the database sort of first came from the reporter, and then Trump sort of adopts it uh, because it sounds you know, sort of grand and, uh, and like he's putting his foot down. And then I think the larger issue here with Obama and Trump and Hillary and, and Carson and Kerry and everybody, they're speaking in internet memes. These are not adult conversations about an adult issue. Uh, President Obama has a very rational uh, public that is looking at this situation after Paris and saying, hey, we have some concerns about this. And he is saying, if you have concerns about that, uh, then you're not interested in protecting the American people. You are being racist. Uh, you are being hateful. You are being un-American. That is not the way to address this. There are plenty of ways to address it where you could lay out the exact way yeah. that you are vetting people from a failed state and figuring this out, but he's unwilling to do that. On the other side, you've just got people saying, absolutely not, there's nothing we can do. Uh, so I just think it's not a productive conversation in any way, shape, or form. All right. I, I just want to go back to just for a moment these, the, you know, the issue of leadership. Um, and we also have Ben Carson, who hasn't done himself any big favors over the yeah. course of this week. When you look at the way that different people have responded to this, it tells you a little something about what kind of president these people would make and what kind of president we have right now. Um, he said, you know, of course, if you have people coming in from Syria, you know, it's like as if you had a rabid dog in your neighborhood. You'd want to know which one was the rabid dog so that you could protect your children. I think in some sense, you know, we kind of get where he's going with this, but it, it, it comes across uh, in a very rough way, Juan. It's distasteful. I, and, you know, I mean, you know, you mentioned at the open, Martha, this business about having Muslims register, it brings up so many negative, poisonous, pernicious historical analogies, beginning with the Nazis and the Jews. I mean, but even in our country's history, turning away refugees uh, in 39 from Florida on the St. Louis, the ship. Uh, and yet, you know, the, again, what we're at is a moment where the polls show Americans want a strong response. Yep. The problem is that when you get this kind of bellicose rhetoric and this kind of uh, caricatures of people, stereotypes of people, uh, it's damaging, I think damaging to us and to who we are as an American people, which historically is that we are welcoming and we do take in people who are, uh, you know, cases of humanitarian refugee suffering from around the world. That seems to have been tossed overboard at this moment. All right. We, we got some breaking news um, that we're going to go to now. Thank you so much. Always great to have both thanks. of you with us. Mary Catherine and Juan, many thanks.